Let's meet our first guest tonight. She is a brilliant actor you know from Good Will Hunting, Rose Point Blank, Speechless, and so much more. Please welcome the glorious, the fabulous Minnie Driver to the show. There she is. Minnie, it's so good to see you. You're joining us from London, where you've been for the, for the last six months. How is it? How is it over there? You know what? It's, it's amazing. Everybody's keeping it properly locked down. Yes. And uh, we're looking forward to new beginnings and the spring. Yes. And it's pretty, pretty cold and grey, but it was blue skies today, promising more. Well, because you normally yeah. split your time. Pre-COVID, you would split your time between California and the UK. What have you missed most about being here on the West Coast while you've been in London? Well, I miss the, um, I miss the Pacific Ocean and about yes. four people. Right. But I miss, I, I genuinely <laughs> miss the Pacific like a, like a lover, like it's my side piece. I, I, I love it so much. Um, I swim in it every day, rain or shine. I surf in it most days. Um, I yeah, it's it's weird. It's like it's, it's a proper eight. It's difficult it. to surf in West London. Yeah, you it's, can't. You yeah. can't. You can't really. It's you can't. You can. Go, you can swim in the Serpentine in Hyde Park with, um, but there's quite a lot of duck. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I want to ask you about a particular skill that you have, which I imagine is very handy if one is an actor, because you say that if there is a film or a TV set near you, wherever you are in the world, you will somehow find it. Talk me through this ability. Well, as with most talents, and Malcolm Gladwell would say, it takes 10,000 hours. Absolutely. You have to really really want to do that thing and I love film sets and TV sets more maybe more than any other place in the world except the ocean right I don't know what it is when I see a cable running along a pavement I get fluttery if I see someone with a headpiece talking on a walkie or a clipboard or someone with a hair and makeup bag I get quite fluttery and I <laughs> desperately need to find the set and I will find it. People will text me and go, like someone texted me when I was in New York and they were like, there's cable on Avenue A. You, you gotta get down there. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'll be low on all the people to get down there. I'm like, down. And I'm always hoping, like I'm rubbernecking at the side, looking to see if I know anyone, like an AD, a grip, a spark, a peer in the back of camera trucks. I'm I love it. Three I love years it so ago. Much. Three years ago, yeah. me and Dominic Cooper, who's a very famous actor who's been on the show, we saw a film set in London. We still don't know what film it is, but we went and got lunch. <laughs> <laughs> we oh, we thought we, we thought if you're doing it wrong, do it strong. We walked up to the catering thing, we ordered chicken quesadillas, <laughs> fries, and a salad, Brilliant. and just took it Brilliant. with us. And we left the set. And no one, and we still don't know what was filming there. We don't know. I mean, I wish I wish you'd managed to be. I, I almost got him when we were shooting Phantom of the Opera. They were doing that Alexander, that Colin Farrell movie next door in the next door studio. And I popped over to see someone, love a film set, not the one that I'm in. <clears throat> and I was half in Phantom of the Opera, and there was a big market scene. And I went and tried to get in the. I got shouted at to go and take my place because they thought I was an extra. And I went and got into the market scene and I had like a turban and a whole thing and I was almost in the background of Alexander oh. because of the people's sense. I quite, wish it had happened. It must be quite difficult for you because I, I can only imagine, particularly in London, which is a much more public city, you must get recognised all the time when you're out and about and wandering around, particularly if you're near film sets. Sometimes, but people also remember here, they're like... Oh, I don't want to recognise her. No, I'm not giving. I don't. I, they don't want. They don't. They're annoyed if they recognise you here. I found. Why? But um, because I think they think you're going to just be up yourself and 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 that I don't know. I've always got the impression that people would rather cross the street than 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 recognise you. But the other day, I was walking down this record store that I used to hang out with when I was a teenager called Rough Trade, and it's just off the yeah. Portobello Road. Yeah, I know. Road. Yeah. I was walking down Talbot Road and there was a there was a gaggle of teenage boys hanging out. And I love the fact that COVID, everything's shut. 
but they're still hanging out outside the record shop that they would be in if they could. Sure. And they're, they're clearly very, very, very high, um, <laughs> having smoked a lot of weed. And, you know, they're young, right? And so I was walking down the street, and one of them go, one of them, like the least high one of them, is like, no, oh, Debbie Newberry! And I was like, and I, they'd all seen Gross Point Blank, which I suppose for them now is like this cult film. Sure. And I, I got the impression that they were, they were impressed I was still alive, <laughs> you know, because... <laughs> years ago to them like in dog years or in like teen years i'm a hundred yeah so and they they all like they just they totally socially distant mobbed me it was brilliant they were they were totally encircling me and they were speaking in teen you know where they were just like oh oh god no oh look at <laughs> They just did that. They did that for like 10 minutes. I just stood there with like this mad circle. And then, you know, they just sparked up another blunt and let me go. How glorious. It's made me very homesick. It really has. It was, it, was a glory it was glorious and it made me feel young. Now, let's talk about your brilliant new podcast, Mini Questions with Mini Driver, which launched today. It's available on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Tell everyone about the show. Well, it is based on, um, loosely on a questionnaire that Marcel Proust wrote back in the 19th century, which was sort of like a parlor game. Um, and what I wanted to do was ask the same set of questions to all these different people and see what it revealed about them so that you can hear what, if I asked what is a question that you would like answered to a scientist, what that answer would be to a rock musician, to an author, to you, to anyone. And so it's the same seven questions with this variety of people, and it kind of shows how incredibly similar we are and in how incredibly diverse we are. It's, uh, well, if I had to pick one of the seven questions that you ask your guests, which one should I ask you? Um, ask me what person, place or experience most changed my life. OK, Minnie, something that just popped into my head, cos what we'll do is... Yeah. Yeah. We'll cut all that out and it'll look like I've just asked a really profound question. <laughs> Minnie, it struck me earlier today on my drive-in that I wanted to ask you, you know, which place, person or experience changed your life? OK, so... <clears throat> I wanted to be an actress since I was six years old. That's, and I wanted to play music. It's like all I wanted to do was all of that. Went, did everything, did all the plays, all the music, went to drama school. Was the only kid in my class to graduate this really prestigious, wonderful drama school without an agent. So I didn't have representation. I was just just standing in the pub at the end of the thing with my mum and like half a glass of white wine. I'm like, I don't know what I was going to do. Happened to... Um, that summer was, was the summer that house music exploded and rave culture exploded in the UK. And every weekend you would get a secret address to some field in the middle of Oxfordshire or some weird club in some part of London that you had no business going to. And I would go and there was this tribe of like amazing pe DJs and their girlfriends and friends of friends. And we'd go in this posse and we'd dance and you'd dance for hours and hours and hours. Now I have my little Ford Fiesta and I'm a good girl and I didn't do all the drugs that everybody else was doing. I would probably have a beer at the beginning of the night and then I would dance for seven hours with everybody else and I would be this sober driver home. And this became my job over the summer. And there was this one other girl in this posse who didn't do drugs and would stay up with me and there would be on the A40 just sort of talking about, like, knitting and wasn't going to be nice to have a bath when we got home and you'd never know that we'd just been thrashing around for seven hours. And anyway, at the end of the summer, she was like, what do you do? And I was like, well, I'm broke and I'm supposed to be an actress, but that, I don't know how that's ever going to happen. And she was like, oh, are you? Well, I work for a casting director. And I, and I was like, do you? And she's like, yeah, you should come in on Monday. Uh, and so I went in on Monday because that was what you did back in those days. And the casting director was this amazing woman called Leo Davis, who yeah. immediately 
put me in a show and got me an agent on the phone, called somebody up and went, yeah, there's a girl here. I don't know, she's weird, she's funny. Oh, you already saw her? Yeah, no, she's fine. You need to take her on. And Abby, who I went dancing with that summer, just changed my life completely by, you know, don't do drugs. That's the... That's, the, that's the, uh... it. That's the answer. <laughs> don't do <laughs> drugs. Minnie, thank you so much for being here. And I just wanted to say that I, I, we, we appreciate you so much being here. What I can only imagine is an incredibly difficult time for, for you and your family. Everybody here sends our love to you after the, the recent loss uh, of your mother. I know how incredibly close you were. Um, are you doing OK? Are you all right? No, <laughs> I'm not. I'm absolutely... I'm an absolute mess. And uh, this, doing this show, is a testament to... Uh, me being a good actress because I really, just want to be, I really just want to curl up on the floor. But you know what? She, she loved what I did and she loved watching me do it. And she loved me supporting the things that I created. And I created this beautiful podcast and all these creative opportunities. And she'd be mad. She'd be really mad if she thought that I'd curled up in a ball and just ignored the launch of this wonderful show and um, the opportunity to celebrate something that one of her kids had created. So that's why I will cry when we say goodbye, but I will not cry now. We love you so much.